Hi, Marianne. So you have a few questions. No problem. We all have questions as we go along. So don't worry about that. Uh, let me get to the first one. You talked about oil paints combusting in their tubes. Well, I've been painting for over 40 years, and I know others who've been painting a lot longer. These tubes right here that I have, these oil paint tubes, they're probably 50 years old, maybe older. Uh, and I have never heard of a paint tube combusting. So I don't think you have to worry about that. I think, and I'm pretty sure the reason for that is because one, oil paints in and of themselves aren't flammable. Oils can be combustible, but only in certain conditions. The other, the other thing about this is that the paint is contained in this metal tube. Oxygen can't really get in here. So without that oxygen flow, there, there's just no chance really of combustion here. I've never heard of it happening and I've researched a lot when it comes to oil paints. So I don't think you have to worry about that. Uh, the only thing you would want to be, uh, be careful about is when you are painting and you wipe your brush with a paper towel, especially if you're using mineral spirits, which you mentioned you were using mineral spirits. Mineral spirits is highly flammable. It's, it's just like gasoline, uh, basically. It's, it's a flammable solvent. So it evaporates. Uh, it's that evaporative action of solvents that's actually part of the reason why it's dangerous, why it's flammable, why it's also dangerous for our health. It's, they're called aromatics. Those aromatics going into the air are what cause us to, okay, they can cause some people who are sensitive to it to become sick, but even if you're not sensitive to it, uh, the aromatics from mineral spirits, from turpentine, from any solvent like that, they're just not healthy for us overall. So, uh, but that same, same problem there is what causes them to be highly flammable as well. Uh, sort of like gasoline. They tell you when you're at the gas pump, don't light a flame near the gas when you're pouring gas into your car uh, because that, that gas is not only the gas itself flammable, but the fumes around it, all of that that it's emitting into the air is also flammable. Same thing with mineral spirits. With oils, that's not the case. But when we're painting and we wipe paint off on our paintbrushes, we throw those into a trash bin and they pile up that what, what that allows, it's kind of like a um, compost bin where the, the compaction of those sitting in there, the heat generated uh, just from the, uh, sort of like the, the composting action. This happens in compost bins where you throw a bunch of leaves or uh, other organic matter on top of each other. And over time, the, the weight and the, the um, compaction of it, them being close in close proximity, it generates heat. So even though the oils aren't of themselves flammable, like this bottle of linseed oil that I have right here is about 40 years old. And it's in a plastic container. I've never worried about it combusting. I have uh, a bottle like this of stand oil. Uh, I have other bottles like this. They've never combusted and I've never heard of anyone having oil combust that way. Uh, but when you have it in that in an enclosed bin with rags that are combustible <laughs> as well, all of that organic matter in there and the oxygen flowing around it and the heat that can be generated in a smaller uh, space, that can uh, cause self-combustion or can cause combustion. So, um, the, and I have heard of that happening to artists infrequently, but it does happen. So a lot of artists now are turning to those metal bins. You push on the, I don't have one. This is what I use. I use this right here, but I dump it frequently. I don't let it just build up and build up and build up. I, and uh, I've never heard of any artists that I know, and I know a lot of professional artists who have been doing this for decades. And I haven't heard of any of them having, if they, if, especially if they're dumping their rags out on a regular basis rather than just leaving them for a long time, I haven't heard of that causing any kind of combustion problems. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Uh, but if you are concerned about it, and if you, leave, if you have a tendency to leave your rags in there covered with, with uh, oil or, or um, 
mineral spirits or something like that, then you might want to turn to one of those metal bins. They have, they have like a, a push pedal on it that opens the lid, you throw your rags in there, and then it seals down tightly. So it helps to, to stave off oxygen flow. We don't have fresh, fresh oxygen uh, coming into the bin regularly and moving around. And also, if it does combust, the, the metal bin is designed to contain the fire so that it doesn't burn your house down or anything else. Um, so that's what I would recommend about that when it comes to combustion. Paint tubes, you don't have to worry about anything with that. And even oil in a container like this, uh, there's no worry of it combusting. The other thing was, uh, let's see, mineral spirits. Yes, you want to, you mentioned you use mineral spirits. You do want to keep that away from uh, flames or, uh, or keep, keep from leaving the rags sitting in a, in a trash bin for very long either because mineral spirits is combustible. Uh, let's see. And I don't even use mineral spirits anymore for, uh, for painting with. I just use it to remove varnish from an, uh, a painting. Like I have a painting over here right now, some, some uh, roses on my easel. And I removed, I had at one point uh, decided I was finished with the painting. And so I varnished it. And then with Gamvar, I use Gamvar. It's my favorite varnish on the market today. It's easy to use. But I removed the varnish because I decided that I had one big rose in there and, and several smaller roses. I decided I needed to balance that out some. So I want to work on it again. I removed the varnish so I can work on that painting again. That's the only time I use mineral spirits. And uh, because I don't like the solvent in my studio, I'm trying to do everything I can to protect my health. Uh, even though mineral spirits is supposedly uh, Gamsol mineral spirits, they've removed, I think, 99% of the aromatics from the Gamsol, 98 or 99%. It's that 2% <laughs> that it's the aromatics that float into the studio. I still just, I just want to avoid anything I can from it. And, and I have um, talked to some people who have developed a strong sensitivity to mineral spirits or to uh, other solvents. So I choose just to kind of stay away from them. And so now I use just, and this goes to your, your other question about uh, oils and what are they good for. Uh, linseed or walnut oil, I have a big can right here of walnut oil. In fact, if you look on the back, you'll see that um, what I talked about with the warning label on it, it says just to be aware that yet yeah, when it's soaked into rags and thrown into a bin, it can combust. Uh, over time, but uh, but I've been painting for forty over forty years, and I haven't I haven't ever had that happen. So it is a rarity. It's just a possibility. But with the oils, walnut or linseed, they're used in painting for two main purposes. Uh, well, three actually. One as a binder for the paint. It's to make paints. That's usually they're made with either linseed, walnut, safflower, poppy seed sunflower, some other oil like that. But it has to be, paints need to be made with some type of a drying oil, the, like uh, olive oil in your kitchen. You pour it out onto your palette or something, uh, mix it with paints, it'll never dry. It's not a drying oil. Uh, it'll always stay fluid. With linseed, walnut, and these other oils that I mentioned, they actually dry to a hard film, and that's why they're good for oil painting. So, but they of themselves really aren't flammable. You can't just, even if I threw a match into this, it would, it would be very difficult to get it to light up as far as I know. Uh, there are other oils that are definitely flammable. This isn't one of them. Uh, but that's different from the, the combustion based upon what happens with oxygen and heat and all of that going on in there. So, uh, but they don't have any, there's no fume, there are no fumes, nothing like that to worry about. So this is used for making, helping the paint to flow um, uh, also. So we use it for making paints, but we also use it when we're painting. Sometimes paints, uh, different paint manufacturers do different things with paint. Some use more oil than others. And they, it's often referred to as being buttery. And some oils like a more dry pigment for certain techniques. Other artists love the paint to be buttery and flow and, uh, 
and move easily on the canvas. It really comes down to personal preference and the, the type of technique or effect that you're going for in the painting. But with, uh, with these oils, you can make, so some artists will use the oils as a medium to make the oil really flow on their painting so that they can get the canvas covered more quickly. Many artists use mineral spirits for that to make the, the, like the initial washes to get the cut canvas covered quickly with color. Uh, I like to use oil, like walnut oil or linseed oil to do that. And it doesn't take a lot, just a little bit will go a long way. <laughs> uh, but there are some, and I would caution against using so much oil that it becomes soupy like just a, a running soupy mix of paint uh, because that can cause wrinkling of the paint or excessive yellowing but I've never really worried too much about that because I paint I tend to paint a la prima or it's called a la prima direct painting or wet into wet where I'm trying to paint the finish the painting pretty much all in one session and by doing that I'm mixing all the paint is getting mixed together so even if in the beginning stages I use a more soupy mix of oil and pigment or more soupy mix of my paints to cover the canvas quickly and and to get those kind of washy effects in the early stages even if I do that I'm I'm painting right into it immediately without letting it dry and the so I'm after the fact adding more paint into it and it makes the the mix much more stable so I, I don't have wrinkling in my paintings I don't think in fact I, I used to paint very thickly uh, very colorful work and I've never had wrinkling in my paint but that is something to be cognizant of it is something that can happen so you just want to be aware of it and then the excess of yellowing it's, it's the oils that yellow it's not the pigment that yellows uh, in older paintings it's the oil uh, but that's just to me that's just kind of a mellowing of the painting it uh, overall you can get excessive yellowing but generally speaking that's in the later stages if you're using a lot of oil or you some artists cover their paintings with oil so you wouldn't want to use the oil as a final varnish that's not a good idea because it it's just going to it's not going to really offer any protection for the painting it's just going to cause it to yellow more and in fact a good varnish is a much better way to go instead of an oil like a gamvar varnish let your painting dry completely to where it's dry to the touch you cannot break the skin the paint film paint skin open and get fresh paint coming through as long as it's thoroughly dry to the touch you can varnish over it with gamvar and then your painting is protected the nice thing about uh, varnish over an oil as a final protection is that the oil would be hard to remove if you try to remove a dried oil on top of your painting you're probably going to remove some of the paint as well if you try to remove a, a dried varnish from your painting let's say it's been 20 or 30 years and it's gotten dust and debris you know just dust from the air on the painting it's looking dingy you can remove the varnish and revarnish it and so the, the varnish is easily removable without affecting the painting underneath and it protects the painting in the meantime from all of the ele uh, elements around us, all the environmental hazards. Uh, people who live in cities have a lot more uh, dust and, and carbon material in the air that can affect the painting. So it's nice to have a varnish on there. And the third way that I use the oils is for glazing or scumbling. So and I don't do that very often, but a lot of artists like to glaze and scumble quite a bit. So with glazing, it's where you take mostly oil with a little bit of pigment. And for glazing, it's usually a darker pigment like ultramarine blue or alizarin crimson, something like that, especially the more transparent colors. And you mix a little bit of pigment into the oil and you can, on a dry painting where it's very dry to the touch, you can paint over that with this oil in, in very thin amounts, small amounts, and you can darken a passage that might be too bright or too light, or you want to change the, the color of it or the color temperature. Like maybe it's a very red passage and you want to add more blue to it to give it a little bit more of a cooler color temperature, you can glaze over that passage. Scumbling is where you add the pigment 
with some white into it and, or a lighter colored pigment. And so you're lightening a passage in the painting. Like uh, in the case of someone like Michael Godfrey, uh, G-O-D-F-R-E-Y, uh, beautiful work that he does. And he does, he likes to, he starts out painting on location, does a lot of work there. And then he might, he brings those paintings back in and uh, he does like, he lives in the, on the East Coast in the Virginia area. And uh, he might do like a, a farm or a, a valley scene where you see the hills in the distance, a bunch of trees up here close to you, and maybe a farm set off in the distance as well. And let's say that when he was painting it, he, the, uh, there wasn't as much light filtering in, or the hills are darker than he wants them to be. And he wants to create more atmosphere. So he scumbles over that with some, a little bit of, it's just a tiny bit of white and some other color into the oil. And you do the same thing. You just lightly put a light layer of, uh, a very thin layer of that over the passage. And then you start to wipe off the excess, however much you want to wipe off. And that's determined on how it looks. So he'll, he'll make those hills the hills don't disappear because it's transparent. The scumble and the glaze is fairly transparent, especially as you wipe it off. But it adds just a little bit of lightening to that area and pushes that passage into the distance. So maybe you want to add more light. You might add a little bit of yellow into that white, like cadmium lemon or something like that. Or if you want to make it feel like it's going way off in the distance and you want that atmosphere, the blue, bluish color in the atmosphere to affect it, you might add a little bit of blue to that white and then start uh, get it so it feels like it's pushing way away from the viewer and farther and farther away into the distance. And that's, that's what scumbling does for that. So, uh, but then with either glazing or scumbling, you can take a rag and just gently wipe off bits of it at a time until you get just the right value or color combination that you want in there. So that's another way to use oils. So there you go. And I think that answers all the questions that you had. So hopefully that helps. If you have any other questions, please let me know. All right, have fun and happy painting.